little disclaimer before you go ahead and start this job. There may be some difficulty associated with working blindly. Uh, if you're not confident in working in situations where you can't really see what you're doing, you have to go by feel, then the job is something that you probably want to pass on and have somebody have a qualified mechanic do or have somebody else help you out that is confident working like that. Because it can be frustrating and I wanted to give you a heads up. Also, I wanted to let you know that you should be extremely careful whenever you put in your new sensor. Make sure that you have it threaded straight so you don't damage your head. You don't damage the threads in there because that can turn into a very, very costly repair. I wish you the best and good luck. Be helpful. Um, I don't have a, a great camera or nothing. I'm just using my phone, but I hope you find this helpful. I've got a uh, Transit 350 with a 3.5 EcoBoost engine in it. And we were having a lot of issues with... Uh, Going into limp mode, the AC, it's been, been in the 90s down here recently. We're in North Carolina. And uh, the AC shuts off. The uh, temperature gauge drops all the way down to, drops down to zero all the way down to the bottom. And the engine starts running in limp mode. It's, it's barely running. And we ran some codes on it, had uh, one of the local parts stores run the codes for us and said that it needed a cylinder head temperature sensor. And the part itself is only is less than $20, but it's all the way back down here behind the passenger side cylinder head. And I tried to see if I could get up in here and reach around, but... As you can see, the engine sits way back in the bay, and this doesn't have a removable doghouse like the vans of the old days, like my old Dodge van had. So, unfortunately, my arm is not long enough and skinny enough to reach back in there and work on it and get that, that little booger out of there. So I was looking for alternate means of doing it and see if there were any tricks and I searched online high and low and didn't find any information really. I did read that somebody said that uh, they suggested removing whole intake manifold which is, is great and would probably give you a lot easier access to it from the top. But these are plastic manifolds and I've heard from quite a few people that they do break easy easily and I don't want to put a lot of extra money in this right now so I was looking for other ways I could get at it I looked from the bottom and it seems like there is a possible access route around the exhaust reaching up from the bottom over top of the transmission and I found out that that uh, is feasible and you can reach it from that side although it is difficult so I hope this helps you out I'm gonna show you how I did it what I did and maybe this will help somebody else out if they have the same issue uh, okay this is the path that we're going to use to get to get to the sensor the uh, cylinder head temperature sensor this is the path that we're going to use but as you can see this O2 sensor is blocking where you can get your arm in so we're going to take that out of the way and then we're also going to bend this heat shield out of the way a little bit so we have more room so it doesn't dig into your arm while you're reaching up there to work on it. And the sensor, it's, you might be able to catch a glimpse of it, but it's way up there. If you look in between the pipe and the transmission, let me see if I can sneak the camera up there so maybe you can get a look at it. I don't know if you can see it, but it is right up in there. It's got a copper, a brass, uh, I should say brass. It's got a brass base on it, two wire connection going to it. This is the part that we're 
that we had to change. This is the sensor itself. That's the old one. In order to, to reach that sensor and change it, I had to take the O2 sen sensor out of the exhaust because this O2 sensor, you can see how long it is on my hand here. This sticks right in the pathway where you need to get your arm up under there. And, you know, there's no way I could get my arm up in there without removing this sensor and getting it out of the way. So that's your first task at hand. And anybody that's ever taken an O2 sensor out knows that sometimes they can be a bear. Um, I had to heat the, heat the pipe up with a torch and get it nice and hot in order to, uh, to get this out. And then the other problem with that is that sensor, the O2 sensor on this is at such a, a weird angle and there's such a hard time. It's, it's so difficult to get your wrench in there and get the right angle to get leverage that I had a hard time finding the right tool to do it. Now I had a couple different O2 sensor sockets, special sockets, but the ones that I had uh, would not allow me to get in there and get good leverage on it. So uh, after trying a couple different routes, I ended up finding a, uh, at AutoZone, they have a, a lender uh, O2 sensor socket kit there that you can rent for $30. And this is a half inch drive, but, and I have a socket like this that's 3 8 drive, but the 3 8 drive the arm on it only comes to about here and uh, you can't get a, a good angle past the pipe to, to put anything in there to turn it. The only way you can you can get into mine with a 3 h drive is to put a, a universal adapter on it which takes away your leverage and you know there's no way you can turn it good to get, get a lot of force on it. With this I was able to get in there and just get enough to put a half inch half inch extension bar in it and uh, put a breaker bar on it and get it loose once I heated it up. So uh, like I said this is an OEM an OEM half inch drive oxygen sensor uh, socket that, that's in a kit it's in a kit that I that I rented from AutoZone to get that sensor out and like I said, I have other ones that, that would not work, didn't help me at all. But this one works. Okay, if you look here, you could see I have the, the OEM oxygen sensor tool. And in order to get, get even use that, I have to use a universal to give me a little offset. And then I have a, uh, an extension bar and a breaker bar on that in order to get the oxygen sensors out in here. It's a, it's a very strange angle. You have to get it just right. And it's hard to get room to, uh, to w operate. So that's what I found worked for me. And like I said, that's a half inch OEM tool. And that worked because the socket portion of the OEM tool is a little deeper. So it gets you a little further away from the pipe. And the arm is also extended out a little further, so you can get around from this direction like that. Once you get the once you get the oxygen sensor out of the way, you have a pathway through here where you can reach up to that point. And I, I wish I could show you from here where it's at but you have to reach over the top of the transmission to the back of the engine to the head through there but you have a pathway between your exhaust and the transmission to reach your arm up here to and you can get a small 3 8 ratchet up in there to get that that sensor out once the once you have your o2 sensor removed which your O2 sensor screws right into there, but it blocks this, this whole area. So if you get that out of the way, you can reach up that way and snag it. And there's a little heat shield up here on the top side 
there's a little heat shield right here that also might be in your way and I was able to just push it towards the exhaust a little bit just to make a little more clearance this is the part that we're that we had to change this is the sensor itself that's the old one and that's a uh, three-quarter inch hex but I found that you can't use a a 6.3 quarter inch socket you have to use a 12 point because the way that the the plug if you look at the plug here you see those tabs on it the way that's indexed you can't get the socket to fit over the plug and also a six point socket you can't get it over the plug and then get it over the hex as well so uh, you need a 12 point socket but then the next issue is there's not a lot of room to work up there and uh, the socket that I had was deep enough was a half inch socket was plenty deep and also fit over it but then the, the, the uh, half inch drive socket is too big and you know it's too hard to work with in, in the tiny spot so I wanted to use a 3 8 drive socket 3 8 drive 12 point socket that I had was not quite deep enough it was deep enough to go over the plug but didn't reach the hex so I had to grind the inside of the socket out and modify it so that uh, it would go all the way completely over the, the part itself if you look here I've got a a 3H drive, a 3H drive 12 point socket. And if you look inside, I hope you can see that. I've taken a die grinder and drilled a little bit out of the inside, ground a little bit out of the inside so that it's a little bit deeper than the standard socket. You know, depending on the socket that you're using, maybe it'll be plenty, plenty deep. But you want to make sure. You want to make sure that uh, that your socket is deep enough so that you can, and you might be able to try this if you get the new sensor before you go to work and get under there trying to work at it, you might want to take your new part and make sure that you can do that, that it's going to go all the way onto your hex so that you can turn it out. You know, when I first, when I first got this socket, it was like that so it wasn't going to turn anything except maybe break the break the plug off so it's got to be able to engage obviously the drive portion of the of the sensor so you can turn it out i put a little bit of uh never sees on my uh o2 sensor Hopefully that'll make it a little easier if I have to take it out again. Hopefully it'll come out without too much trouble. I took the Never Sees out of my trusty 30-year-old bottle of Never Sees that I've been using forever. That uh, I actually ran it over with the truck. So you could see it was completely collapsed and exploded all over. But there's still some Never Sees in there so might as well use it. Now you're ready to put things back together. Put some dielectric grease in your new sensor. Put a little bit of that uh, Never Seize on your O2 sensor. And basically it's just a reverse operation of what you've already done. Just be very cautious whenever you're putting in the new sensor. You're going to have to put your, your hand up there and feel for where the sensor goes and be very careful that you don't cross thread it and that it threads in easily with your fingers before you put the socket and the ratchet on it and put it in and please don't over tighten it you don't want to put it in real tight just feel it till it starts to get snug and then tighten it up a little bit after that it doesn't have to be real tight and uh, after that you're just going to get all your get your plug back on your sensor on your cylinder head temp sensor and then you get your O2 sensor back in and plug that back in 
and you should be all ready to go. You'll just have to get a code scanner or get somebody at one of the local parts stores to scan your vehicle and, and clear the codes off. And <clears throat> hopefully everything will be set for you and you won't be having any more of these troubles. I wish you the best of luck. God bless you. If this helped you out, drop me a comment. And I'd be glad to hear from you. And uh, you can follow us also. I appreciate it. Have a great day.